Welcome back to episode nine of the Student Telecaster Build. Those of you who haven't been following it, check out the other eight episodes. What I'm doing is I'm doing a Telecaster Build on YouTube uh, for the students of a Luthier program that I'm teaching at a local uh, college. And I'm doing the Telecaster here, but I'm building a Stratocaster in class. And I've been trying to keep up with the progress of the class so that the students can watch what I'm doing with the Telecaster and then they're either building a Telecaster or they're building a Stratocaster, one of those two in class and then I'm demoing live in class the build of the Stratocaster so they can kind of go back and refer to the videos and so on and so forth. So I don't want to go too far in depth in, into why we're doing what we're doing but just know that's the purpose. This is a entry level basic first time electric guitar building program uh, that I'm teaching and the Strat and the Tele are the two areas of focus for my class. So I'm getting a little bit behind on the videos and I'm about a week behind right now so I have to catch up. So let me kind of show you what I've been demoing in class. I'm building the Strat in class and so here we've got the uh, the body all cut out and uh, pockets routed, trim cavity routed, uh, the neck joint is, is fit, the neck is pretty much ready for finishing processes uh, right there with uh, everything complete. I've got a nice flame maple uh, neck with a beautiful reddish rosewood fretboard right here. The pocket is, is actually very nice and uh, just got some final sanding to do on this and then we're ready uh, to dry fit the components and that'll kind of be the next step of what I'm doing in class is well number one mounting the actual neck screws and neck plate and then uh, dry fitting all of the hardware to make sure that everything is right before we send these items to the finishing process. So we've got some catching up to do with the Telecaster uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're, where we're at right here. All right, last episode, we basically focused on doing the neck pocket. Let's take a look at that. Getting the neck pocket done for a perfect fit for the neck that we've created for this particular body. And as we saw, I mean, it is a really, really nice fit. Nice and snug all the way tight in that joint right there. So. We're going to end up loosening it up a little bit after we apply to the finish to the neck, but I'd rather loosen it up as we go um, and have it snug the entire time. Now we also have got our bridge located here. I've got a template which I'm going to use to make the pick guard and that fits in there ever so nicely, right like that. This is where our electronics uh, plate is going to go. Now I do have a uh, blank plate right here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I generally order blank plates because sometimes I do custom switching uh, that requires me to drill my own holes. So I like having that option, but I may go with a standard configuration on this particular telly. Um, I'm also thinking about adding additional features by burying them underneath the pick guard area. And I've kind of mapped out um, some additional switching that I might want to do under there and I have yet to decide whether or not I'm going to actually do that or not but I'm leaving myself options so that I can do it. So with this particular bridge it's designed for the ball ends to go in the back so it's not a through body design so I'll actually have a pretty clean back to this guitar with no holes having to go all the way through. But for my students if you're building a telly or a fixed bridge strat and you need those holes to go all the way through, we're going to cover that in class, how we drill the holes from the top, maybe half the way through, and then drill the holes from the back through and how we align those up. I use a very specific technique uh, for doing that that works wonderful. So the first step of our process today, what I'm going to do is take an extra long precision ground straight edge and I'm going to line that up on both sides of the neck and I'm going to draw lines. So why are we doing this, Steve? Well, what I want to do is ensure that my neck pocket didn't cause my alignment to change. It should have been based on the center line, but 
if my templates shifted ever so slightly, you know, a half a degree here and there could throw everything off. Now if I use my center finding ruler and I, I place the, uh, the center index, what I should get is something that shows me exactly centered. And I've got one and three sixteenths on either side of that line. So that looks good there. I'll double check one more area down here. I've got one and a quarter uh, light, one and a quarter light. All right, so what I've just done is I've verified that my center line is still my center line. Okay, and that's a very important step just to make sure nothing has shifted. The next step we're going to do, since, since that's okay, is we are going to take to the bandsaw and we're going to rough cut out the shape of, of the body. Okay, I went and cut this out in the bandsaw. I cut it to about one eighth of an inch of my line. Uh, so that's, that's enough where I had a little bit of safety margin, but not so much that it's going to give me any trouble whatsoever on the router table. All right, so let's go ahead and put the template on. Now, I will mention this as a precaution, only because it already happened in my class. Make sure the template is facing the right direction. Otherwise, you will have a left-handed Telecaster and or you'll have a, a reverse one. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to be very careful to make sure that I don't leave the center line. I'd really, I would really prefer to have an extra set of hands here to do this. So what I'm going to do is put just some shims out the side of the lower bout area while I position the upper. And the critical dimension of this template is that the neck pocket line is perfectly in the right spot and it looks very good uh, to my eyes. So then I'm going to try to secure those pieces of tape on the top side, making sure nothing shifts and I still have the center line. Okay, it looks good. And then as I slide these shims all the way to the bottom, more and more of that tape can kind of grab hold and then I finally just pull them out and we should have perfectly lined up. All right, I'm pretty pleased with the alignment of this template and I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple holes. Now these holes are just centering holes. So, and this is why I'm doing this. Now, if I was doing, using a bridge that had uh, string through body design, these are the holes that, and I'm gonna drill all six holes because those are the top holes that are gonna go through the body. But, in this case, with my bridge, my Texas Toast uh, bridge that Matt um, provided for me, uh, it doesn't have the string through. It's gonna be terminated with a ball end in the back of the bridge. But that will still cover up the holes that I just put in there. And so with those two pins in place, I have alignment. Now, what you're looking at here is my standard template. And the standard template has your more traditional Telecaster pickups to it. And you can vary up the Telecaster a lot. I mean, I could have humbucker humbucker or tele humbucker or Tele P90 or Tele Filtertron or all these other different variations that you can have. So in my particular case, um, I'm trying out a pickup I have not personally used before. Um, it's from Lawler and I use a lot of Lawler pickups. I really like their pickups a lot, but it's the Charlie Christian pickups. And in this particular case, it has a pretty traditional a Telecaster style bridge, so that's fine, but it's a very specialized neck pickup and it's much larger than the standard hole. So what I did is I made myself a template that just does the pickups that I want and this will then <clears throat> go in place of the, of the main template after I do the electronics cavity 
and after I do the perimeter route. Okay, so th at that point I can swap out for this template and it's got the same bridge uh, string through holes in it. So I can use those same alignment points on this template to get sure to make sure it's aligned on this body blank with obviously also the center line, you know, working its way up. And once I get that mounted, I'll be able to route out the pickup cavities exactly for the pickups that I'm using on this guitar. So I made up a whole bunch of various ones of these for the students. So if they have a mini humbucker, humbucker, um, all those other ones that I mentioned, you know, they're going to have the right template for those too. So when we go to the router table and just do a quick perimeter flush cut of this template right now. Right, now that we took the Forstner bit and drilled out the holes, now I'm taking this pocket one and three eighths inch thick. So the body is one and three quarters, so I'm going to have three eighths of an inch left. You don't have to go that deep, uh, but I like the option to use push pull pots and things like that, and I like it a little bit deeper than, than just the kind of the standard. So I'm using a quarter inch cutter, uh, but I got four bearings stacked on there, and that's just the way I like to roll. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to start off with just barely about three quarters of the first bearing showing and then I'm going to step all the way down as far as this bit will allow me to go before that collet hits my template. Then I'm going to switch to a longer, a longer bit and finish the process. Alright, so let's get going. All right, now I got a one inch bit in there, just a single bearing, but I've got the entire sidewall that acts as my guide. So this will be perfect. So I'm gonna go down just enough where my bearing starts. And then I'm gonna keep on going all the way till I hit my stop at one and three eighths of an inch deep. got the electronics cavity all set. Uh, I could do this one now, but I'm going to actually switch out the templates in order to do those because again, I've got both of the templates that I need for this particular guitar in one template. And rather than doing one and worried about the spacing on the other, we're going to get it perfect with this one template. Okay, because of my alignment pins that I had there, it really was pretty simple. Just dropped in, made sure the front lined up with the center line, and I've got perfect placement for my two Charlie Christian Lawler pickup routes. All right, we bore out most of that area. The router can do the rest. Alright, we're making some really good progress with this guitar. Um, I think the last thing we're going to do for this episode is go ahead and do the roundover on the back. 3 8 inch roundover is what we're going to use on there. Now we're also going to do um, a belly cut and a forearm contour, but I think I'll save that for the next episode. So when we're doing the 3 8 inch roundover, we're going to take this all the way around except the back side of the heel. Uh, we're going to stop just short and then we're going to blend that in and just take an ever so slight chamfer just with sandpaper on that edge. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do all of that. Now, when we do the belly contour next episode, we're going to be taking away some of that round over that we just did, and then we'll have to kind of blend and match that to something that, that, that looks good. And then when we do the uh, forearm contour, it's going to be a modest forearm contour. It's not going to be as much as I maybe would normally do. I just want to soften that edge just a little bit for comfort. And the other thing I should mention is I'm not doing the 3 8 inch round over on the front of this guitar because this guitar is going to get a binding on the front. And even with that forearm contour, we're going to follow that binding down and dip it ever so slightly uh, around there and work all the way around. So that'll be a different episode too, but we're get, kind of setting the stage for those uh, different points right there. So let's go over and do the 3 8 inch round over and then call it a day. All right, you see the transition areas? I just stopped as it just started penetrating those areas there. So I'm gonna manually file those to blend those in and then really just sandpaper around where the, uh, the neck mount plate is going. And, uh, and that'll be it. Looking pretty good. All right, really made some progress today. We've got all the routes done for the electronics cavity, for the pickups. We got the profile flush cut out. We've got the back 3 8 inch round over um, done. And just because this starts getting a little exciting, let's start putting some of this together. Give it a little bit of a close-up. There's my template for my pick guard. You can see it's just that perfect fit for that Charlie Christian pickup. There's the Texas Toast bridge with the uh, bridge uh, pickup from Lawler in there. There's a plate. Not sure what I'm going to do with that. I may just go back to a standard. Neck is perfectly fitting. Everything's looking great. This is one of the most fun parts of guitar building because you got the shape. You got the neck, you know, f fit in there. You can see where the pickups are going to go and how they're going to look. You know, it's like this is just a beautiful time of guitar making when everything is starting to come together. So until next time, remember... No matter what you do, start with excellence. <laughs>